What's going on everybody? So for today's video, I wanna give you my six month review on my Tesla Model X. So I've done different videos on this car already. You could find them in the link below talking about how we bought it, you know, why we bought it the way we did. But to give you a brief rundown, this is a 2017 Model X P100D. It's the fastest one they've got. It's very similar to what they've got right now, so I decided it was better to buy it used than new. But for this six month review, I wanna tell you all the good things I found, all the bad things, and what you need to be aware of if you're looking at buying one of these cars. So for the good, the number one thing that has impressed me the most is the tech. By far, it has the best tech out of any car on the market. The fact that I can go on my key right here and open up all these doors just like this and open up any door I want, I can just go hit the back, open up the rear, I could pop the, the frunk right here. It's the best. It is so cool and it makes it so convenient when you're walking to your car, being able to open the doors for everybody. And then with just one simple click, you can close them all. And that's just with the tech from here. On top of that, it will open up automatically for you when you get near it, and then it will close when you walk away from it. So that's a really cool feature because I literally never open the door for myself anymore. And you don't realize that that's a big deal until you stop doing it. Whenever I go to someone else's car now and I gotta open the door and close the door, you're like, man, this is an inconvenience. It sounds super high class, so I don't want it to come off that way, but once you stop opening the door for yourself, you realize how nice technology can be. Another cool little thing is once you get in, all you gotta do is press the brake pedal, door closes itself, never use your hands. As far as the tech and the safety goes, this is crazy. On this screen right here, it can now pick up stop signs, red lights, green lights. Right there, obviously, you see the stop sign, which we're at. I'll show you guys a red light real quick. But check this out. You've got these red lights all there. And what happens is when it turns green, it'll actually chime. And so this is a kind of a bad thing because if I'm on my phone at a stoplight, which is, I'm not gonna say it's often, but you know, it happens it will chime and let me know that, hey, it's a green light, you need to go. I don't need somebody else honking, you know, letting me know that it's time to go. The other cool thing is it is pretty precise in knowing what cars are behind you, you know, what's on the side of you. It'll even, look, see this car? It's just turning past us. It's pretty crazy. But let's wait for that chime, because I think the chime is really cool. Super cool. I think it's a really cool feature that you know, most cars should have, right? Like if it's gonna be a green light and it lets you know, that's awesome. Like a lot of these features are things you didn't even know you needed in your life until Tesla told you you needed it. One of the big reasons I bought this car was the full self-driving. Now it's pretty cool, I'm gonna turn it on right now. And I've already got it set to go to my office right here. So I've got it where it's gonna exit off this ramp right here for me. But you gotta keep your hand on the wheel or it'll get mad at you. But you see it made that turn by itself. It's exiting the ramp. And it's for the most part legit self-driving on the freeway, which is really cool. And so it's trying to tell me to get in the right lane. If I have a certain setting, it'll do it itself, but I have to allow, I have to acknowledge its lane change. So I've acknowledged the lane change, I'm in, it's driving, it's getting me off the ramp, super cool. Obviously the tech is great, but the best part of the P100D is the speed, the zero to 60 in, I don't even know what it is anymore, 2.9 seconds or something. Um, you can just punch it at any time. I'll just give you guys a quick taste, but you see these cars going by us. Here is us punching it right now. Okay, so we got really fast, really quick. <laughs> I've gotten used to it, but the first time I did that, oh man, it was crazy. So yeah, that's always fun to do. 
So some of the not good things. I bought this car directly from Tesla. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm gonna get a nice car that doesn't really have too many issues and that Tesla was gonna have fixed and that actually wasn't the case. I'm not like a nitpicky guy by any means, but I just wanna show you so you guys are aware if you buy from Tesla direct, what you could be getting. If we go here in the back, you could see this tail light was cracked. Not a big deal, but you know, it's like, why couldn't they replace this? It's an $85,000 car. They couldn't replace the tail light. If you go here, you'll see there's a big scratch right there. I think something like that should be fixed, but they don't. And if you look close on the steering wheel, you can see a lot of scratches on the wheel. All right, so it's not a super big deal, but if you're buying direct from Tesla, realize they're not gonna fix a lot of these cosmetic issues. Another big thing that's heartbreaking is the Falcon doors don't always work as you expect. The coolest part about this car is the Falcon doors. Everybody loves it because it's so unique, but there have been many times where there's nothing right here and they just won't open because they sense that something is here. Or if you're parking against a curb downtown or something, the door will sense that and sometimes it won't open and you're just out of luck. So even though they're really cool and you never have to actually open them, they can be a hassle sometimes. Another thing I've thought about is the full self-driving package. When I bought this car, it was about $7,000. Thankfully, it was included with the purchase of my car, but if you wanna add it as an upgrade now, it's $10,000. Now, it lists out all the features on Tesla's website and it's not that they're bad features, it's just, I don't know that they're worth $10,000 at this current time. Elon is promising that once they have fully autonomous self-driving, you're gonna automatically get it and they're gonna keep raising that price, but I don't know when that actually is gonna be. I just don't think at $10,000 it's currently worth it. The autopilot it gives you that's not full self-driving is plenty good. In fact, I find myself using that instead of full self-driving. They're not that different. And with that package, one of the features they give you is called Summon, and I'll show you guys it real quick. So to pay, if you pay $10,000, you will get this upgrade called Smart Summon. And I can put my location where I'm at and my car will come and get me. So we're starting it now, look at it. Nobody is driving this car. So, even though it's super cool that it just came to me without me driving it, like kind of an RC car, if you watched, it took the craziest route to get here. It went through every parking stall. It took, I thought it was gonna hit that red truck for a second. Like, I would not trust this thing to pick me up. It took a good minute to get here when it would have taken me 10 seconds to walk to it. So even though it's super cool and it'd be cool to show your friends, it's pretty useless. Now I gotta go repark it. I can show you guys real quick the walk away. No hands. Shut itself. The walk away is cool, but summon, while cool on camera, not really super cool in practicality. So if you were to ask me, should you spend $10,000 to get this full self driving package where you get navigate on autopilot and you get this smart summon? No. I think what Tesla already comes with is plenty. So the last beef I have with this car is the battery. So right now I have the biggest battery that came with it. On their website, it advertises as 289 miles of range. But here's the thing, you don't really get 289 miles. They only recommend that you charge up to 80%. So typically when I charge it at home, I'll have right around 240 miles. But the thing is, once you get near 100 miles, you always wanna charge because you wanna make sure you have enough juice the next day. So really, if I start at 240 and I know 100's my limit, I only have 140 miles of range. And honestly, that 140 miles is really like 70 miles in real world driving. I don't know if it's because I drive fast with the P100D, I don't know if it's because I have the big tires, which are less fuel efficient. I don't know if it's just, you don't get what they advertise. But either way, on the city driving that I do around town, 
I usually get about half of what they advertise. So I find myself charging at home every other day. So the battery is definitely not what I thought it was gonna be. And I'll also mention that when I go to California, I love and hate driving this. I love it because it has the autopilot and I'm pretty much not driving at all, but I hate it because the charging is problematic. We have to stop midway and charge for an hour. Then when we get there, I have to charge because we're depleted again, so that's another hour. And then wherever we're staying typically doesn't have a charger, so at some point during the trip, I have to go charge again. And at this point, I would much rather just have a gas car to drive to trips. It's not worth it with all the headache of charging. Sometimes a supercharger might be 20 minutes away from my hotel or Airbnb, and it's a really big headache to go do it. So I don't think I'll be taking this on many more road trips, unfortunately. Now, that being said, I think they will address that issue at some point. The Cybertruck supposedly is gonna have 500 miles of range. If they can accomplish that, I think travel will be better. But as of now, the battery is a real issue. I think it's fine for daily driving, just understand it's not gonna be what they say it is. And it's a pain for road trips. So the question you're probably wondering is after six months, would I buy this again? And I'll say the answer is yes. The fact that I bought a used P100D and it already had all the full self-driving and all these things, I'm happy with it. I would say if I was only looking at buying a new one, I wouldn't get the full self-driving. Honestly, I'd probably get the long range one so I'd have more battery. The long range one's probably plenty fast. You don't need 2.9 seconds, even though it is fun. But it's an amazing car. And honestly, its biggest competitor is gonna be the Model Y, which my partner has right there. And I think that one's just a little too small for me. I enjoy the other perks we talked about where the door's open for you, it's got the third row, it's roomier. I love this car. So don't get me wrong since we ended with all the negative things, I just want you to be aware of what exactly you're getting into if you're buying a used Tesla. And I'd love to hear your comments below. If you're a Tesla owner, how is your battery? What would you get differently if you were to buy again? And if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, I hope this review helps you out. And if it did, do me a big favor, go hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you go subscribe to my channel, follow me on all my socials. Until next time, take care.